Good morning, it's half past one in the a.m. And what do we have here? Here we have the very last project that I built because the arcade pie didn't count, that was a rebuild. This was the actual last machine that I built. This is the PlayStation Legacy. It is a hollowed out PlayStation Classic with a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and then it's got um, uh, an SD card extender which goes to here which is what this little memory card is covering. The little memory card is just a little bit of perspex. It's got a drive light under here, micro switches here and here, a fan built in with a button here and this is a, an original DualShock 1 which I've modded for USB and put that in there. And if you would like to see me build it, I'll put the link here. And if you want to build it for yourself, the uh, little information thing that comes out after that will be here. And that you can basically download the image for yourself. And I've left super detailed instructions on how you can build it. Anyway, the PlayStation Classic that came out a while back was an abhorrent failure. So what I wanted to do was to see if I could build something for the same price or cheaper and make it better which is why this is called the PlayStation Legacy, because unlike Sony, I did more to celebrate the legacy of the original PlayStation than they did, and I did it for the same price. I mean, if you take away this controller, the actual cost of everything here came to exactly the same price as when it came out, including the um, the Classic. Now, I've done talking about this. I've, I've talked this thing to death. Like I say, if you want to build it, you can... All the instructions are in the uh, section down below. However, coming out soon is the Mega Drive Mini, which I'm super, super looking forward to. Mostly because it's got a better selection of games, and Sega seem to be, seem to be doing right by it. Now, in the past, they've only had at games do all of their uh, mini consoles, and at games have been legendarily terrible so still waiting to see what the new mega drive mini i think it's called is like but anyone that's seen it so far said it's you know tip top so i'm not going to try and do it better because it's bad but i was thinking could i make a mega drive mini cheaper and with more features than Sega is doing. Now I understand licensing issues, same as here, you've got Tony Hawk's 2, you've got Gran Turismo, you've got Gran Turismo 2 on here. I understand licensing and I understand why they're not on the PlayStation Classic, but even things that Sony had the rights to, they still didn't put on there, for whatever reason. It was just, you know, an abhorrent waste. So I'm done talking about this for now. So rather than buy a Mega Drive Mini, gut the thing, rip out the um, PCB, the single ball computer that's inside, and rebuild it. I couldn't wait. And also, the Mega Drive Mini is going to be about £90, something like that. So I was on eBay, as you are, and I saw this. Now this, very interestingly, not an electronic device. It's called the Retro Electro Collectible Models, and it is literally a scaled model of a Mega Drive. When it says that on the front, it's really not joking, and it really is that small. Check this out. So inside, you've got your little pamphlet that comes with it. This is like the first one that came out with. And then you have a little scaled replica of a Gen 1 Mega Drive. European Mega Drive. And it is really to scale, and the little switches move. So the little volume slider moves. That little switch miss. Now, this LED isn't an actual LED, and this reset button is just a sticker. And obviously, their sticker's on the front. But it is literally to scale and has a working slot at the top for, I hasten to add, a uh, tiny little cartridge that goes in the slot and actually clips in. So I saw that and I thought, this whole thing here. 20 quid. So I thought, you know what? I might give it another go. Again, not because Sega are doing wrong by the Mega Drive, but if I can get a scale box 
a scaled cartridge, a scaled machine, and a little, I mean, fair enough, these buttons don't work, but a little scale controller for 20 quid. I might as well give it a shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pause this video now and then reset up the camera because I wanna open it up. This is the first time I've sort of looked inside this thing and it is super cute. But what I wanna do is, I mean, the detail on it as well. What I wanna do is quickly unscrew this thing and see if it's worth putting another Raspberry Pi inside. That's, that's basically the plan, is to put a Raspberry Pi inside this thing. But we'll see. So let me, um, let me move this camera, unscrew it, and see what we're working with inside. Okay, so here it is out of the uh, packaging. Um, to be honest, looking at it, for what you're paying, it's not bad. The detailing on the machine is pretty good. The little stickers and whatnot could be better. Um, there are one or two scuffs, but I think that's just my like dirty fingers. Um, it seems to be pretty well put together for, again, for what you're paying. The controller's nice and detailed. It's actually really, really well put together and painted. And it's even got that same sort of like um, textured finish that actual Mega Drive controllers have. There's a nice little detail. They didn't have to do that. Cartridge, again, looks pretty nice. It's the right shape. It's the right, you know, what what's the scale? One to one... Uh, 1 to 2.3 and the box now that's the only problem I've got the box could be printed a little bit better the front looks like the original box and the back's got all the blurb on but it's really not very well printed so it's slightly blurry it's basically a very low res um, image that they've put on the back but anyway it still looks like the original box and my one had a little sort of little tiny ding on the side but it doesn't matter what we're looking for is this. Now, it's hollow. I know that much. Because A, you can put that all the way down. And B, you can actually see in the little volume slider. Now, what I wanted to do is put the little contact switches, the little micro switches, behind here. So hopefully this goes all the way through and doesn't just have little wings that pop out into little grooves along the side here. So if there's a little wing that sticks out the top of this switch, putting in little uh, trenches down the top and the bottom, that's kind of an issue. But still, hopefully it's not. This goes all the way through, so I can probably do something here with another button. And this, I'm thinking of peeling the sticker off, cutting a hole in it, and maybe putting a reset switch behind it with like rubber, or maybe just peel that sticker off, save it, and then put a switch there, and then put that back on the top. And as far as these go, I wanna put in USB, but obviously I can't fit in a uh, standard USB type A female socket but a, a micro one would definitely fit in there question is do I put in a Raspberry Pi 3B plus or do I put in a Raspberry Pi um, zero I want to put a 3B plus in there the idea is that I'm just going to do a cut and paste job so I'm going to get 128 gig SD card put that inside a Raspberry Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and then just put the image for the PlayStation Legacy on it, and then just do some fine tuning as opposed to start from scratch, because God damn, that was a headache. So, the question is, do I put a 3B, I mean, if I do put a 3B Plus in there, I'm gonna have to remove the ethernet ports and the um, USB ports as well. So what I've done is I've, liberated a screwdriver from our IT department because I forgot mine. And hopefully inside this thing is just a big blank void with any luck. So we've only got four little screws holding it. I mean, it feels pretty hollow. The cartridge has got to sit in something though. So maybe there's some kind of thing there and those little flaps are spring loaded. So we'll see. All right. Oh. And hopefully these stickers don't go across the seal line, but we'll find out. Oh, no, they don't. Or on the back either. Okay. So, yeah, that's exactly what I thought. So these little uh, doors here are spring-loaded. You can see. Put that in. Um, that's kind of an issue. They don't have to be that big. Oh, good Lord. But this is removable. So if I remove that, I lose the doors. 
but I could, once that's removed, easily fit a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in there if I remove the Ethernet port and the USB ports as well. See, what I would do is I would have two female micro USBs come out of here and into, I'll just solder them straight on the board. So I'll desolder both the ports and then have it running in there. That'll be a super low profile. Obviously there'll be no fan. And I need two micro switches as well. So maybe I remove these posts and glue it together. I'm not sure, this thing in the middle, that's just for the stand. There is a little stand that comes with it. Uh, which is now wedged into the box. Oh, trust me, there's a stand that comes with it. So, if I remove all of that, I can fit... I think I can fit a 3B Plus in there. I'm pretty sure. I mean, it will fit, but... It's just all the desoldering. Now, the switches. This is good. So, this actually, this little switch goes in here. So, I can put a micro switch behind that. What I might do is put a... Um, screw or glue something on there so I'll have two uh, essentially two round things that look like a thumb and so when you push it into the on position it goes over a micro switch and clicks it in and then when it comes back you pull it over and click it in again so yeah so you'll have both on and off but with only one micro switch so in cross over the micro switch click it on and across and off the volume slider, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with yet, but I could put a switch or something underneath there to make the volume go up and down. I could extend the headphone jack to there, but it would look really weird. And that reset button isn't actually a button. You can see it's just a little sticker. So I might cut that out and put a reset uh, button there. So the reset button on the PlayStation Legacy, the one on the right hand side, which is the flap open the drive, that can go under that reset button, no problem. But overly, I'm actually quite impressed with that. And obviously I've got to drill out, this is just a little plastic, a little red plastic dimple. There, that's not an LED. So I've got to drill that out and put a red LED in there for the drive light. But overly, that's not bad. I'm actually super impressed with that. And so when it's done, it will look the business. Now, do I put the SD card reader in there and then put Sonic in there? Because I won't be able to have the drive, uh, the, the flaps in there anymore. So if I do, like you'll remove that, but then I'll have to cut it in half. I'll see, I'll see how much room I've got inside. What I might do, is either have it looking like this and glue those flaps shut and then just have this to the side or remove the flaps completely, like just remove this whole thing in there, have it open, cut that in half and then have that sat in like so, which is kind of what I'm aiming for. But I think I can do something with that. Now, the reason I don't just whack a zero in it and call it a day is with a zero, I'm limited to Mega Drive. The plan I have for this is why not have every Mega Drive game ever made, but also every Master System game, every Game Gear game, every 32X game, and every Sega CD game, Mega CD game, all in one. Now, if I have a 128 gig SD card, I can easily do that. But if I put a Raspberry Pi Zero in there, the 32X is a bit wonky, and the Sega CD is a write-off. So it's going to need more grunt. Now I could put an A in there, but an A has only got one USB port and then it's about, you know, splitting USB ports out to micros. I might as well just get a 3B plus desolder everything that is above, you know, 5 mil. Like shim down the uh, the the posts for the video and whatnot as well and then just put it all in there. I think it will work because I, what I want is this thing to have everything right up to the Saturn. So it'll have all Master System games, all Game Gear games, all Mega Drive games, all 32X games, and all Sega CD titles, all on one, exactly like the PlayStation Legacy. When you leave it for more than, you know, 10 minutes, it will do Sega ads, like the old, um, uh, the barbershop ads from the UK. Sega ads in the UK were great. The ones in the States were terrible, but the ones in the UK were brilliant. Like the one where the little... Um, uh, Asian kid sits in the, the chair and he's like, oh, give me the works. Like that, those ones, the barbershop ones, the guy with the, the 
you get to like the robot arm. Oh, it's going to be great. So I want that. As far as controllers, I do have USB um, Sega controllers that I could plug in. But obviously, I'd have to convert them to micro USB, which isn't hard. If I can convert a 20-year-old DualShock 1 into a USB, I can convert a already USB into a smaller USB. That's not a problem. The problem is, I actually prefer the Sega Saturn pads, so I might have one Mega Drive pad and two Sega Saturn pads. Um, mostly because I like the clicky shoulder buttons, and also it's way more comfortable. So with this, I might have one like standard six-button controller, and all, or I might even get one of these and convert it to micro USB. And also for like my day-to-day -day use, because that PlayStation Legacy I use all the time. It's one of my most used consoles. And I want this to be the same. And rather than have wireless controllers, which it could do, but rather than wireless controllers, I really, really want the Sega Saturn controllers because those clicky buttons will make, you know, navigating the uh, the UI super, super intuitive and easy. But yeah, I'm actually super pleased with that. For 20 quid, it's not bad. So when you consider the Raspberry Pi was like, what, uh, 34... 34 plus the SD card, 60. I've already got the controllers. I mean, they were a couple of quid. So, I mean, you're looking at saving already 25 quid, give or take, off the total price of the Sega, of the uh, Mega Drive Mini, whatever it's called when it eventually comes out. So I'm already, you know... I'm already saving a bit of money, and then it's just work after that. So, yeah. Anyway, this is part one. Hopefully it works. Hopefully I don't just stick a zero in it and go, oh, just Mega Drive. But, yeah, hopefully it works, and fingers crossed, I'm going to get it done a lot quicker than the other one. All right, cool. Peace.